We are going through some weird stuff right now. <laughs> but we have gone through weird stuff before. And I do think that we can learn from it and that we urgently need to. That's why I've been working on all these projects. That's why I've got this new podcast out, and I hope you listen. But it's not just the, the distant past, in the very recent past, when we got Donald Trump in the White House in the first place, you might, you might remember what, what preceded that shock election result here in the United States in 2016. Our shock presidential election result in 2016 was preceded that year by some shocking and surprisingly right-wing election results in Europe including the Brexit vote in Britain, which happened just months before Trump's surprise presidential victory here. I asked Ben Rhodes to please join us here tonight uh, in the wake of what is now, again, another round of what seemed to be surprisingly right-wing election results in Europe this weekend. Was it right in 2016 to see right-wing election results in Europe as a harbinger of what was coming for us in the fall of 2016? Right. As President Biden balances his campaign responsibilities right now with back-to-back -back trips to Europe, he just got back from Europe. He heads back to Europe again on Wednesday. Do the election results from Europe right now, this weekend, have hallmarks that tell us anything about what to expect here and about how weird this is all going to get? President Biden clearly sees our connections to Europe right now as absolutely key to the future of the world. Does what's going on in European politics right now tell us anything to expect about the future of our world here? Joining us now is Ben Rhodes. He's former Deputy National Security Advisor to President Obama. He's co-host of the Pod Save the World podcast. Ben, it's really great to see you. Thanks for making time to be here tonight. Good to see you. First, let me just ask you, um, for some of our, our viewers who uh, may not have paid close attention to what was happening in the European elections this weekend, let me ask you two questions about them. Do you think they are important for us to pay attention to? And can you just give us a, a rough characterization of what happened in those elections? Sure. Uh, these were elections for the European Parliament, so the European Union-wide Parliament. And so it's the only election that takes place every few years in which all of Europe votes. So it's a good barometer of where opinion is in Europe. I think the two headlines are the far right made noticeable gains in the two largest countries in Europe, France and Germany. In France, the National Front Party, which is the far right party that used to be on the fringes uh, of French politics, emerged as by far the largest vote getter in this election. And to just build on what you're saying, Rachel, this is a party that is not only far right, they've had ties to Russia. They got a $10 million loan from Russia within the last decade. So this is uh, not conjecture. This is reality. And in Germany, the AFD party, which has ties that go back into the kind of neo-Nazi past of Germany, that's never a good thing in German politics, obviously, they got over 15 percent of the vote. Not a huge total, but very alarming given the source here. Now, I want to be clear. In other parts of Europe, actually, the center did hold. But I think the, the real concerning factor is in the two most important countries, France and Germany, we saw these far-right gains. Do you think that um, it's right to look back at 2016 and see some of what was going on in politics in Europe as a harbinger for the shock election result we got in the fall of 2016 when Trump won? Uh, do you think that these election results should be read uh, as a harbinger of what's coming down the pike for us this year? Yeah, I absolutely do, Rachel. Uh, the commonality between the Brexit vote, the vote by the UK to leave the European Union in 2016 and the Trump election, was that it was a lot. Uh, it was a surprise. People did not think that Brexit was going to win that campaign, and they campaigned on a kind of right-wing populist message. The slogan was "Take Back Control." And they ran against globalists and liberal elites and against immigration, uh, and was very Trumpy in its message, frankly. And it kind of foreshadowed what we ended up dealing with in the fall here. I think, Rachel, the warning in this election, and you asked me a question when I came on to talk about my book a few years ago about far-right parties and, and their commonalities around the world. You asked me, well, what lesson should we learn? I, I always think about that. Uh, the lesson I take from this one, Rachel, is that there are incumbent parties in Germany and France that have defended essentially the status quo. Emmanuel Macron has been a defender of the European Union. Olaf Scholz in Germany has been a defender of what we would call the liberal international order. People are not listening to that message right now. You cannot hmm. defeat these parties, these populist insurgents, by being the defenders of the status quo. That's hard for a Joe Biden, who's president of the United States. But you have to simultaneously tap into people's dissatisfaction with globalization, 
dissatisfaction with inequality, sense that things are slipping out of control. It's not enough to just say, we're the responsible adults here. You have to kind of get down and have a different message for how things are going to change. And I think that that's the warning sign that Joe Biden should hear. Not enough to run on status quo here. Not enough to defend even the things that we think are very important. You have to meet people where they are, and people are frustrated. Ben Rhodes, uh, former deputy national security advisor to President Obama. Ben, thank you uh, for making the time. I feel like um, when, when we need to like widen the lens a lot and look at America in the world, uh, you're almost always one of the first people I think of to talk to about these things. Thank you so much for being here. Thanks, Rachel. I can't wait to check out the podcast, too. It sounds great. <laughs> I appreciate it. Thank you.